So it seems like a good point to bring us all together. Now, you might have noticed you're like, you started to march through just like you did before, and then you're like, whoa, oh, some things have gone wrong, right? Because you looked at this and treated it much like the previous object. I mean, it does look very similar, right? You're like, oh, cool, I can read the, um, I can read the intercepts, the x-intercepts off of this, right? What's the x-intercept you get out of this? One. What's the x-intercept you get out of this? Negative three. And then you're like, oh, last time I got three. This time I've only got two. Right? So, a lot of people, now this is actually really important because at least four people independently have done this. So I want to call your attention because this is really a big red flag for me. Okay? A lot of people have said to me, oh, I know what to do with this. Please don't write this down. It's equal to this. Now, what a lot of people are thinking of in their mind is something different. You're thinking of this. That's, different than two squares. That's the difference of two squares. Okay. Now this is really different and I just want to pause for a minute, not to teach you something, but just to point out how easy it is to mistake one for the other and how important it is for like, like that's a background skill. That's a background skill, right? Mrs. Lee. That exact error was one of the errors they highlighted on Saturday at the HCC that exact misconception. Mm. Okay. Now, let's convince ourselves that this is not really what's going on, right? Number one, number one, this x minus one all squared does, <laughs> I hope it looks different to x, minus, x squared minus one, right? The, the thing that's being squared is quite different. In addition to that, like when you say something squared, what you mean is something multiplied by itself, right? So actually the correct, like if you wanted to break it apart a little more, the correct way to write this would be, sorry, I need to rub some stuff off. Yeah, that's right. It's not an x minus 1 and an x plus 1. It's an x minus 1 and then it's another x minus 1, right? Now, writing it in this way is actually helpful for us because it draws out something a bit weird, which is that, remember how we said, oh, there's a root on 1 and negative 3. Sorry, I should have said an x-intercept, right? When we write it in this way, it kind of makes it look like, wait a second, it's like there's two on one, right? And then there's this other one on negative three. So it's like there's two roots, but they're on the same spot. Okay? Rusty, you have a question? So can we turn x minus one and x minus one together and get a value of them times x plus three? If you multiply these together, you'd get this, but that's just kind of going back where we started, right? Wouldn't it be like x squared minus two x plus one? Okay, so you could, if you wanted, you could expand that. Right? That would give you x squared minus 2x minus 3. But then what you would say is, I might as well kind of factorize that all over again because the factorized form is what's useful to us. Right? So expanding it doesn't end up getting us anywhere useful. Well, not many places are useful. x minus 1 x squared. Yeah, so you'd get this. x squared minus 2x plus 1. That's what you'd get. But then what do I do with that? Wouldn't it be like the other one, like over there, to the left? It's going to be just like this one. It's going it's to go back here. There's no other way you can, there's not a simpler way you can write it. That's kind of like uh, tying up a knot and then untying it. It's like, oh, my shoe is still on my foot. Okay? Your socks were untied. My socks were? Anyway, okay, whatever. Right, now, we need to bring this back to this graph, right? What does it actually look like? Well, I'm going to put on the information that you've just told me, right? There's the one here. I'm going to be a bit little, little weird, and I'm actually going to put another x there to indicate there's something weird happening here. And then there's uh, negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Like, whoop, like so. Okay? Now, what's this going to look like? Okay? Now, you could actually try this out. You could put some values in. I should ask, by the way, just like before, is it one of these or is it one of these? Positive or negative? It's positive because there's no minus signs on the x's, so it's going to be this guy, right? And so... When you have a look at this shape, right, you're actually going to pass through at negative 3. Then you're going to go up, come down, and then instead of going right through, you can't pierce through the axis because then you'd have to come back up somewhere else. But did you notice there is no somewhere else? Did you notice that? If I would have found other x-intercepts, I would have found them here, right? But I have to actually touch and then leap back off. This does look just like what we were drawing before, just it's a little bit higher. See that? The first one we did this morning was y equals x cubed. 
Right? Y equals x cubed. Have a look at it for me. How many x intercepts does it have? You could either say, you could say, there's one. It's right there. Yeah? Or, being that x cubed, you could write that as x times x times x. It's like there's a root 0 here, and here, and here. It's almost like there's three roots all sitting on top of each other. There. So the number of roots that you have actually changes the behavior a little bit. This is actually what we call a double root, but we'll go into that in a little more detail later on. This is the shape. It's a bit messy, but I don't care. Why not? Because it's just a sketch in order to solve the real question. Okay, the real question is, when is this less than or equal to zero? Can you tell me where? Can anyone tell me? What do you reckon? Yeah, go ahead. Like what? What? Below three. Like less than three. To the left of three. Less than negative three. This guy's good? Yes. Right? Do I include negative three? Yes. yes. I do. How did you know? It's included, the boundary, so I'm just going to draw a nice fat circle there. Is there another spot? No. What do you reckon, Rashton? Where it touches the x axis. Where it touches the x axis. And touches is exactly the right word, right? By the way, it's tangent to the axis. Right here, do we think, what's the value by the way? What is the value here? X equals, uh, that's, it's one, right? Um, the Y value is zero. And I think that helps answer. Like, if, is that part included? Is it less than or equal to zero? And the answer is it's equal. It's exactly equal. So this guy is okay, right? So you're ready to actually express our answer now, right? We've done everything on the graph, so I'm ready to actually provide an answer. Inequality. Let's go for it. I'm going to go from left to right like I usually do. So this part here is negative 3. How do I say to the left of negative 3? X is less than or equal to negative 3. You okay with that? Is anything else, do we include anything else? Or X exactly equals 1. Because it's not less than or equal to, it's only that right spot exactly there. Okay. Now, for this next part here, we do this in interval notation, okay? We know how to do this part here, right? I have to go from left to right into the full notation, so where do I begin? Negative infinity, which means, do I use a parenthesis or a square bracket? The square bracket means I can get there, which I don't have any on the board of that I've written yet, okay? But I can't get to negative infinity, can I? So therefore, it's a parenthesis. Comma, where do I go up until? Negative 3, do I include this? Yeah. I do, so it's a square bracket. And then here's the weird bit. Mrs. Lees and I were having this conversation, right? I think the best way to write this, the least ambiguous way, is to say, well, this next interval, right? Where does it start? 1. one. Where does it end? One. Is that okay? And of course, I have my square brackets because I have to include the start and end point, which are both 1. Okay? Um, last little bit, shall we do this number line? Shall we do it? I'm going to get rid of all this other stuff. Zoop. It's all gone. Say it again. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. You can draw another one. <laughs> Though I should point out, I always graph in pencil, partly because my graphs are generally so terrible that I need to fix them up along the way. And I encourage you, I think pencil's a good way to go with that. Okay, so here is my less than negative 3, and there's my 1. Bam. It's finished. Okay, um, quick question. Did anyone do this one yet? Good, because I want to make a minor change to it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Right, so this one says 2 minus x. That's messy, I'll write it again. 2 minus x. And then in the other brackets, it says x squared minus x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So, right, what does this thing look like? Well, gonna prepare myself my Cartesian plane one last time. This is gonna be the last example that we do together. You're doing pretty well. Say it again. The, sorry? Okay. Epsilon. Epsilon. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, I'm looking for some x intercepts. I've been searching. x intercepts are always the thing that I start with. So can someone tell me what x intercept will I get from here? 2 is correct. 2. 
Now you'll notice I've been a slightly rude and given you this thing here, which is not neatly factorized. And so I'm gonna ask you, what roots could we get out of x squared minus x minus one? We could go to the quadratic formula. <laughs> I'm trying to make you work. What have I been doing the rest of this time, okay? Um, I could go to the quadratic formula for this, right? I'm just gonna write the first line of the quadratic formula. Minus b. Are you okay with that? Okay. Plus or minus the square root of? B squared minus 2, 4ac over 2. Oh, hold on a second. Did I do it wrong? I did do it wrong. Sorry. That's what I meant to do. It's a, it was too easy. Too easy. No, no, no. Did I do it right? Yeah, I did it right this time. Okay. Minus b. Plus or minus the square root of? What's b squared in this case? Minus. 4ac, which in this case is 4. Do you agree with that? And then I divide by 2a. What are the solutions to this thing? There aren't any. There are, this, this is why I got the sign wrong, okay? There are no solutions to this thing. So what does this mean? Well, we started off, we did... Um, we have seen so far, you can get cubics, which have um, three solutions. We started off with that this lesson. This one had two solutions, right? Um, we knew this guy had one solution, right? Well, how many solutions have I found here? How many x intercepts? Just the one at um, two. And then this other guy did not give us anything. What a jerk. Okay, all right, my next question. Is this going to be one of these or one of these? Um, the second one, the negative one. It's the second one. How could you tell? Good, there's a minus there, and then that's the only minus sign, yeah? So a single minus sign will become negative, right? It is sad, right? So therefore my shape is going to look like that, it's just gonna be that, and I'm only allowed to hit the x-axis here. You see that? Well, it's still going to be a cubic. Well, I missed. You get the idea. But I'm not allowed to hit the x-axis in any other places except the one I already identified. Do you see that? It's forbidden. Okay. It is forbidden, okay? Um, a way you can think about this, if you like. Why are there no solutions? Well, if I wanted to get more x-intercepts, right? I would have had to have found them from here. Yeah? Well, if it be positive, it might look like this. Like that. It might have looked like that. But again, I'm still not allowed to touch the x-axis anywhere else. Are you okay with that? I can't touch the x-axis anywhere else because I would have found those x-intercepts earlier and I've already ruled them out. Two is the only one you're allowed to have. Okay? Now I will point out, because I've done no other work than to find the x-intercepts, I actually don't know whether the graph looks like that or like this. Sorry, this is messy. Two. Right? You know how these cubics, right? Sorry. These cubics, they have this like weird, like wobbly bit, this sort of kink in the middle, okay? I don't know whether the kink comes before the two or after. But why do you think I don't care? You're a rebel. Nishan, what do you reckon? <laughs> yeah, that's just how I roll, right? 